Now, I would like to introduce you to our main speaker for the day. His name is Robert Wooster, and he is the field supervisor for the Washoe County Regional Animal Services. So let's get Robert on here. Hi, Robert. Welcome. Hi, thank you very much. Can you see me okay? Well, we can see you and we can hear you great. Okay. Perfect. I'm excited for this. Uh, last week when I saw this presentation um, during our practice session, I actually learned a few things and I, I've started searching for, for things for my go bag. So I'm going to hand it to you. Awesome. Thanks, Robert. Okay. Let me see if I get my presentation to start sharing here. Bear with me. This is my first time doing a Zoom meeting like this. Okay, so can you see what I'm seeing? Hopefully everybody can see what I'm seeing here. Yes, so we can see it. A, it is missing a slide on here for some reason. So, okay, well, we will make do with what we got here. So uh, my name is Robert Wooster. I'm a field supervisor with Washoe County Animal Services. And I'm gonna talk to you guys today a bit about uh, what we could do to prepare for um, evacuations, disasters and stuff like that for not just our large animals, but also our small animals. Um, due to what's going on right now with the wildfires, that is gonna be the uh, main focus um, for today. But I would also like to touch on some of the other stuff that goes on around here. Um, so the topics that we're gonna hit today are gonna be on uh, FEMA and what FEMA has done to try to help out um, with getting people to be able to evacuate with their animals, um, how Hurricane Katrina specifically affected uh, what is now done. Uh, we're going to go over flood, earthquakes, and then fires, um, getting a kit and making a plan for when you evacuate, finding out if we are prepared to be able to evacuate at a moment's notice, um, pets and disasters, a safety checklist, and then where to go from there. Um, there's also a bit on the end here about uh, what we're able to do here at Washoe County Animal Services to help you guys out. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure where my slide went here. I'm going to have to go off of some of my other notes here. Robert, would you like me to share the presentation that you sent? Would that be helpful? Um, I'm just missing the title on all these. So oh, okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why it has the title missing. So I think I'll be okay here. Okay. Okay. So uh, for FEMA, um, back in uh, 1988, the Robert T. Stanford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act was signed into law, um, and this was obviously to help people uh, with emergency assistance whenever a disaster or something like that occurred. It did not, however, address any issues with animals. Um, Hurricane Katrina was a huge contributor to why that changed. Um, so in 19, excuse me, in um, 2005, when Hurricane Katrina hit, uh, they added in an amendment um, that allows animals to be evacuated to evacuation sites with owners so that they will be able to leave and have their animals and not stay behind. Um, this next slide here, as you can see, there's a photo of a dog um, and a sign saying, uh, we have animals, we're not leaving. A lot of people have perished. A lot of people and their pets have not survived disasters because they refused to leave because they didn't think they had anywhere to go. Um, and that's just not the case anymore, which is very nice. Um, Hurricane Katrina was the uh, catalyst for that. Um, um, it was a catalyst for that. Um, you can now bring your animal and house it with you at the shelter. They may not be able to stay with you if you're staying at like a Red Cross facility directly in your cot there uh, or in your bed, but there is gonna be a location directly next to uh, where the humans are being held for the animals so that you are right there with your animals. Uh, we're here to help you. Animal Services is here to help you. We want to be able to help out. We want to be able to get the animals out of your house if you're not there. Uh, we want to make sure we get animals back to you. Um, many people have resources and they don't need to stay at a shelter or um, a provided facility, but they can't get their pets out. We can do that for you. Uh, what's really important is that you have some form of identification on your animals. I'm going to probably pound this in quite a bit throughout this presentation, but microchips are the best way to identify your animals. Um, Make sure you have some form of um, ID. If you have a collar, they can come off. Um, nylon collars can melt. They're not the best thing to have on an animal. You can't lose a microchip. Um, if you're a resident of Washoe County, you can come down to Animal Services. We will microchip your pets for free for you. We microchip everything. We have dogs and cats obviously are the uh, number one animal that's microchipped, but we do 
horses, pigs, goats. Um, I've done turtles and tortoises. We can microchip pretty much anything um, as long as it is humane to do so. We're certainly not going to put a microchip onto a mouse or something along those lines, but we're happy to microchip anything. Um, that information is stored with us and it is also sent to the microchip companies so that if your animal is ever lost, we can get it directly back to you. Um, make sure that information is always current. Um, if you change your phone number, change your address, um, sometimes people adopt animals and don't update the microchip, make sure all that information is relevant and up to date so we can make sure that we get your animals back to you. All right, so we're gonna go into flooding just a little bit. Um, I put our phone number here, 775-322-3647. 3647 stands for dogs. Um, it's a phone number you wanna contact us. Uh, we do get flooding here. 2017, we had a, a very bad flood in the Reno Sparks area. Um, our own shelter here um, was experiencing flooding and we were putting sandbags around to try to make sure we were safe here as well. We're out helping people. Give us a call. We are happy to come out and help out. Um, we have the ability to do so, but you need to call us in a timely manner. Um, there was a lot of properties that flooded, especially out in Palomino Valley where people decided to shelter in place the water built up and they couldn't get out and they called us at the last second to try to help. And at that point, the water levels were so high, we couldn't even get onto their properties. Um, so make sure that you are able to um, call us right away. Um, it comes up sometimes about whether you should or shouldn't maybe release your animals um, in the past. Um, it's always been advised to open up your gates and let animals loose if you don't think you're going to be able to get out. We have properties that have 50, 60, 100 horses or alpaca, llamas, and it may not be feasible for the owner or they may not have the means to get them out of there. Um, so in the past, they've said just open up the gates and let them go. That's not always the best choice. Um, I'll go into that a little bit um, further here in the presentation. But if it's going to be a safety issue for the first responders, we certainly don't want to put them into a situation where they can't get out to help people. Um, so we'll go into kind of when you should or shouldn't release your animals. Um, the other thing you want to do is make sure these animals know how to load into your trailer. Um, specifically, this is going to go for the livestock. This is going to go for your goats, uh, pigs. Uh, I know that question already came up as to whether or not uh, you can get a pig into a trailer, especially if they're difficult to deal with. Um, horses, during disasters, things are hectic. Um, everything is loud. Everything is fast. There's usually lots of noise going on. Animals are freaked out. You don't want the first time you ever load your animal onto a trailer to be during a disaster, practice that stuff. You need to make sure you're loading them on a regular basis, make sure they're familiar with how to load, get them into a routine, you can get them in and out super easy that way. Um, especially if a stranger ends up being the one to have to load the animal. If they already know what to do, it's gonna make everybody's lives a lot safer and a lot simpler and we can get your animals out a lot faster. Um, same thing with your um, dogs and cats, get kennels. Um, the best thing you could do to help prepare for this kind of stuff is to kennel train your dogs. At our house, we have two dogs and two cats they all have kennels. Our cats even go into kennels and we train with them. They know exactly where to go. They're calm in there, they're relaxed. We leave our kennel doors open all day long when my dogs are exhausted and tired of dealing with my kids or they just need a break, they go into their kennel and that's their safe space. If your animals already have a crate and that is their safe space, they are gonna feel a million times more comfortable when it comes to an emergency to go there and that's where they're gonna to wanna to be because that's where they know they're okay. Um, and then if they end up going to a shelter and being housed there, they're held in crates as well. So it's super, super important that they're comfortable with that. Um, it's going to make everything much more simple for you. Um, again, I, I think I brought this up before. Don't use nylon if you can help it, especially on your horses. Um, that stuff will melt. And if you have a nylon lead uh, and nylon halters for your horses, it's going to melt onto them and cause severe burns. They're going to fall off and not going to be able to be used um, to get them out of there anyway. Um, let's see, let's go up to earthquakes. Um, we are on the line here, so we do have the potential and have had earthquakes. Uh, so you have to make sure that you're prepared for that kind of stuff. Um, last thing you want to do when an earthquake happens is, uh, trying to find all your animal stuff. Even if your house doesn't fall apart, um, it could be unsafe to be inside of it. You need to be able to get in and out as quick as possible. Make sure you and your family are safe. You can get your animals out. You should have their food in the same spot. Um, I would keep extra leashes, keep everything right in one spot. Leashes, dog food, uh, kennel, food bowls, water bowls, uh, sealed water, and something a lot of people overlook is having your vet records, having uh, any kind of medical issues, kind of sealed in a bag there so that it can't get wet. 
so you can bring them with you. If you have to run out or if we come in and get your animal out of the house, we're going to be able to have that information and bring it out for you. All right. So fires, which is kind of what we're leaning towards right now because it is fire season and we have had numerous fires this year. Um, I'm thinking you could probably see both these slides at the same time. So this is wildfire and house fires. Um, you can see uh, that top picture is the fire from, I believe it was in 2012, uh, the Collin Ranch fire, which burned a ton. Um, it lit up the sky there and then house fires down below. Um, wildfires are our most common disaster to hit uh, Washoe County. Um, small animals should be carried out in a crate if possible. Uh, you don't want your cats and dogs getting away with everything going on. So if you have them in a crate, get them in your car um, and go to a designated temporary shelter. Um, all that information, once stuff is going on, will be announced by the county um, as to where to go. We'll go into that a little bit further as well. Um, same with your livestock. Get your livestock um, onto your trailers and get them out of there. Um, something that you need to make sure you're doing is making sure that your trailers are ready to go. Um, if your trailer hasn't budged in years and your tires are flat, this is the wrong time to try to fix it. You need to make sure, especially in fire season, that um, everything is operating and working properly. Um, you're gonna be notified by the county um, on the radio, by television, um, and I believe they're using social media apps as well now to announce, uh, one, if there are evacuations, where the evacuation area is, and they will also include where small and large animals go. So small and large animals can always come directly to the animal services facility on Longley Lane. Um, at the very end of this, I'll have the address posted for you. Um, and they're, generally they're also gonna be housed um, wherever the people are being housed. With COVID, things have changed a little bit. Um, so that may or may not be the case, um, but it is certainly the goal. Um, livestock, large animals like your horses, um, poultry, pigs, goats, stuff like that, um, typically are gonna go to the Livestock Event Center. Um, it's a very centralized location, lots of space for us, but we do have other areas that we're uh, able to utilize. Um, in the past, we've been able to go out to Ironwood Stables. They've been super gracious to allow us to use their facility. So when Palomino Valley uh, catches on fire, which seems to happen every couple of years, we can use that facility and we can house all animals there. Um, we're able to set up and set up crates. Uh, we have temporary shelters that we can drive out and set up there and house close to 300 um, dogs, cats, and stuff like that, along with all the livestock. Um, same with down south. We do have uh, people who have offered their facilities down south so that you don't have to go if Washoe Valley is on fire all the way back up to the Livestock Event Center. Um, you can take them sometimes to Maplewood Stables or there's other places that are uh, at the time open and willing to uh, provide housing for us. Um, that would all be announced at the same time as where people should be evacuating to. Um, Sometimes there's mandatory evacuations and you can't get back in. So for example, we had a recent fire where there's a property that has about 110 uh, horses that are being boarded there, very high end, beautiful horses. And they also have a lot of hunting dogs, approximately 160 hunting dogs. And they, their property almost burned down. They had to evacuate out. They had everything set in place. They had volunteers, they had countless trailers, they had all the means to get the animals in, uh, into the trailers and off the property. The problem is they couldn't get the property because of the evacuations and uh, the highway patrol shutting down the freeways and not allowing anyone in. So you need to make sure you have some kind of plan set forward. They were able to contact us. We called NHB and advised that they were there to be able to help out and were authorized to go inside of it uh, to get the animals out. Um, for us to be able to remove that many animals would be a large hardship. So it's great that they had that ability and everybody should have the ability to evacuate their own animals. But we're here for you when you can't. Um, Hopefully not many animals at a time because that is quite a lot. Um, house fires, um, house fires obviously can go along with um, a wildfire, any other kind of fire, um, houses catch on fire. Uh, it's super common to have, you see it on the news all the time, a house catches on fire and there's animals inside. Uh, it's such a dense small area, the smoke will take over and harm the animals before anything else. Um, it's recommended to have some kind of means that the animals can get out if they have to. Uh, a doggy door is a great option. Um, obviously, it changes the security level of your home, but it gives an opportunity for your animals to get out. If you wake up at 2 a.m. and your house is fully engulfed in flames, you're not going to have time to go searching for your cats and searching for your animals. Have some kind of means for them to get out, um, if that is possible. 
have photographs of your animals. Animals will take off, um, especially if you have a means for them to go. If your doors are left wide open, they can take off and run. Have those photographs so we can get them back to you. It's really common that a neighbor will call and they found an animal during an evacuation. They can send us a photo. We can match it up and try to get them back to people. Um, we don't want your animals uh, having to be separated from you. And I know people don't want their animals to be separated from them. All right. So let's go up to large animal evacuations. Uh, large animals, especially during um, emergencies, can be the most difficult to deal with. Um, they can be extremely hard to uh, move off the property, especially if it's a stranger. Depending on where they're kept changes everything as well. You know, if they're inside of a stall, it's going to be a little bit easier for us to get close to them. But if they're in an open pasture, um, especially a multi-acre pasture, and they don't want anyone to get close to them, there may not be anything we could do to get them out safely. Um, it used to be uh, common practice during emergencies, especially like a flood or a major fire where people didn't have the means to get out. So they left and put their animals and cut the fences to let them go. They would write a phone number or some kind of contact information on the hooves. Um, we've kind of gotten away from that, um, mostly because if you can't approach the animal and you have to try to um, grab its hooves to read a number on there, that might not go so well. It could be unsafe for the people, unsafe for the animals. Um, it could wear off pretty quickly. So what we recommend now is get a grease pen um, and depending on the color of your animals, you may have to get different colors so they show up well. And you can write in large letters phone numbers with a grease pen so that anybody from a long distance can read that number. So let's say you were not able to get back to your property, but there's a horse wandering around because somebody cut a fence. It's got a number on there. We can then call somebody and have them come get the animal or at least put them in the right direction and try to assist with picking them up. Um, it's a great means to be able to get an animal back home. Um, I've seen people do it with spray paint. I've seen lots of spray paint, spray painted on animals. I've seen it on dogs. Um, a lot of dogs, people will take uh, hair dye and write stuff on them with that. Um, it works. Whatever you have to do, if you have to leave and you can't take your animals to be able to provide some kind of identification information would be great. Uh, also microchips, as we said before, uh, we scan all the animals that come in for a microchip. As long as they're microchipped and they have current information, we can contact you right there in the field to get the animals back to you. Okay, so the question is to release your animals or not to release your animals during an evacuation uh, due to a fire. Um, I don't know if everybody in the viral video that's been going around from the Southern California fires where there's firefighters running and there's a, a longhorn coming down the trail. Um, this animal isn't being aggressive. He's just walking. He's trotting down. Um, but it's terrifying if you aren't comfortable with them and don't understand their behavior. But let's say that wasn't a friendly bull. Let's say that was a big bull that was out there and he was upset. He was angry because of everything going on and going around. Um, the smoke, the noise, airplanes going everywhere, fire. Um, they get disoriented. Last thing we need to do is have the first responders that are out there trying to stop the fire and trying to save our properties um, be attacked by an animal and get injured, possibly killed. Um, Unfortunately, there's no black or white answer as to whether or not you should or shouldn't release your animals. What I recommend you do is contact our dispatch at 322-3647, and we can, you can explain to us what's going on on the property, what animals you have. We can try to determine where the fire's at and what the best course of action is at that point. Um, but you have to take the animal's behavior um, and the stress levels into consideration before we even consider to um, cut fences now and, and let stuff go. Um, Times are changing, so we have to make sure that we're kind of keeping up with it. And, and the releasing thing is kind of uh, unclear at the time. So give us a call, and we will kind of on a case-by-case -case basis try to help decide what the best option is. Um, also, defensible space. Um, you're going to hear this from the firefighters all day long um, from public services. If you have defensible space around your property, there's a better chance your property won't burn out and your animals will be safer on their own property. There's lots of pastures that are multi-acre size. The animals could be on there safely. If you have uh, defensible space cut down and trimmed so that the property doesn't catch on fire, um, your animals have a much better chance of surviving where they're at if you're not able to get them out of there. Um, obviously, getting them out is going to be the ideal way to uh, handle the situation. Um, let's see. So we're going to kind of do a little of activity. Um, this is just for you to kind of do and sit there and think about for yourself. Um, I want everyone to kind of close their eyes and just think for a second. Um, you've had a really long day. You just got home from work. It's 530. You're doing laundry. The kids are going nuts. Um, you're trying to cook dinner. And all of a sudden, you hear a loud boom. There's 
dry lightning and a fire starts. Um, everywhere around you is now on fire and you have a matter of minutes to get out. What are you gonna grab? So just think about that for a second. Okay, so um, obviously with the uh, focus of this being animals, um, I'm hoping everybody thought to, to grab their pets, but did you think to grab your animals? You know, if you only have one, two, three minutes to get out, um, you, your family, your kids are going to be the first priority and then your animals. And to a lot of people, animals are equally as important as the people. Um, did you get them out? Do you get supplies for them? Do you have a means to be able to get them out easily? Do you know where everything is at? Um, Kind of food for thought to think about when things happen quickly because they do happen very very quickly i've been to people's properties that literally were burning the fire they had no idea anything was going on because they were just kind of in their own boat doing their own thing and they have minutes to get out and they have no idea what to do um, you want to be prepared for that um, what about for your livestock are you able to get them out um, quickly? um same situation you know if you're inside your home and a dog and a cat that might be easy for you to grab but what if you own 15 20 um, horses um, you have alpaca, you have lots of chickens on your property. Are you able to get them out? Um, you need to get yourself safe first. So the option may be that you have to call and ask for assistance and you get out of there, you tell us what's on the property and we can get in and try to get your animals out for you as quickly as possible. Um, this is not the time for you to try to learn how to load up your animal or uh, try to figure out how to hook up your trailer and get your trailer out of there. You wanna make sure that that is all set in place ahead of time. Um, also, we talked about vet records for your domestic animals. Same thing for your horses. Do you have your health certificates? Do you have all your testing done? Do you have any kind of medical um, issues that your animals need set aside so that it's easy to get to, easy to access, and you can bring with you? Um, let's see here. Some cute little guys here. So uh, what type of disasters maker in Washoe County? Well, we've kind of hit on that. Um, floods, earthquake, forest fires, house fires, winter storms, um, extreme heat. Um, we're less likely to have hurricanes or tornadoes, but we did have a fire tornado this year, so you never know what may happen. Uh, that may become a new norm, who knows. Uh, but whatever the disaster is, plan ahead for what items you might need to grab before leaving your house. Uh, keep your disaster items in one spot so you know right where they are. All of my animal crates and everything that I need for my animals if I had to leave are right by my back door, the, the door to the garage, so we can be in and out in a minute and have all of our animals out of there. Um, we keep our personal items that we want to make sure we have there as well. That way everything is in one spot and we are good to go. Um, make sure you have food. Uh, if you take your animal to a shelter or if they end up coming to our facility, um, we're going to feed the food that we have here um, at the shelter. That may not agree with your animal. Um, your animal might be on a special uh, diet or the stress level. Um, lots of bad things can happen to animals if they're stressed out in eating food they're not used to. Um, lots of uh, gastro issues and whatnot which nobody wants to have to deal with. Have food set aside that your animals already like, whatever they're used to. Uh, put an expiration date on there. Um, you may not touch that uh, container for a couple of years. You may not ever have a reason to. So make sure you're rotating that food in and out so that it's not going stale. Um, you don't wanna waste the food and you certainly don't want five years down the road to go use something that uh, is no longer nutritionally valued um, for them. Okay. Um, so your pets, during a disaster um, are, are going to change a bit. Um, the way they react and the way they react to people are going to change. Um, socializing your animals, whether it's a dog, cat, um, or a horse from a young, young age is extremely important. Again, we going back to smoke in the air. Um, you could have planes dropping fire retardant. You have lots of sirens going. You have flashing lights everywhere. You have people that don't look like normal people. They're wearing Tyvek suits, they're wearing fire suits. They have helmets on and face masks on. That is terrifying to an animal. Um, you don't want your animal to run from people. You want your animal to be as comfortable as possible with them. Um, so make sure that you are um, training them and getting them socialized at a very young age. Um, it's gonna take a lot longer to catch a stray animal when you're looking like an alien to them coming into uh, their home, or even if they're out running loose. Um, get them into obedience class and teach them manners to be comfortable around strangers because they're going to be around a lot of strangers if you aren't able to get them out and we're in uh, control of your animal and taking it to one of our shelters. 
um, it's not going to be safe um, for certain uh, for us to be able to try to catch animals. Uh, we don't want to get bit. We don't want to have any injuries. Um, we don't want them to get scared and run into a dangerous situation when they may not have been. So again, socialize and socialize and socialize them so that when something happens, you are um, easily able to get your animals out and we're easily able to, to catch them for you. Okay. So you may want to have a list of um, pet friendly places to take your animals. Um, just because there's a fire doesn't mean you may have to use uh, one of the county provided facilities. You may be just fine to go get a hotel, but you don't want to try to figure that out at the last minute. Call around and have a list of um, hotels in the area, friends, family, um, somewhere away from whatever the disaster is um, that will allow you and your animals to be there. Um, the county will generally have a list going for you, but if you already know where you need to go, um, that is much, much better. Uh, a lot of the local uh, hotels here and casinos uh, will provide discounted rooms for people during emergencies and a lot of them take animals. Um, I don't know any off the top of my head. Uh, I don't want to put a, a hotel on the spot here, but I know there's a ton of them here that will take you and give huge discounted rates. Um, keep in mind, you don't want to go somewhere. Uh, you don't want to go to a friend's house during a fire who's three blocks away because they're familiar with your animals just have to relocate again. So kind of have that, um, in the back of your mind. Um, have an emergency pack. Um, have phone numbers there, have photographs of your animals in case you guys get separated. Microchips again, as long as they're updated, are a fantastic way to get animals back together. Um, have family members' phone numbers, addresses, anywhere they can go and they can be taken to. We can try to get your animals somewhere safe, um, whether it's to a friend or family's house with your permission or to the shelter. We want to get them back to you. Um, again, this is where the crate training is super important. They're going to be housed in a crate if they're in an emergency situation. Um, if they come to the shelter here, they're likely going to be in a dog run, which is a little bit more space for them. But you want them to be comfortable. Um, it's going to be a terrifying situation for them, and we want to minimize anything that is going to stress them out. Um, I've been on countless fires with animals, and they typically actually do very, very well. Um, minimal issues. They all get walked multiple times a day to make sure that they're stretching the legs and they're getting space. Um, but it's still, it's still scary. It'd be the same as if uh, you or I had to go to a random place where we didn't know anybody um, and we had to stay inside of a room not knowing where our family members are. Um, it's not fun for them. All right, so for domestic animals, um, and by domestics, like small animals, dogs, cats, and stuff like that, let's go over a safety checklist. Um, you wanna have a uh, bowls form, um, preferably two non-slipping bowls or non-tipping bowls. They have the wide base on them. Uh, you don't want them to be in a kennel, have water in there, and then have them tip it over and um, be sitting in, in water. Um, you don't want their food to tip over and spill into the water as well. Um, make sure you have enough food and water for up to five days, uh, preferably even longer if possible. Um, depending on how many animals you have, that might not be an issue. If you have a lot of animals, that might be a little bit more difficult. But if you have the food and you're able to get out and you have what the animals are comfortable with, it'll make your life a lot easier. Um, medications. Um, and your vaccination records, uh, you want to make sure you have those with you at all times. Every time you get new vaccinations, um, ask your vet for a updated list to be printed out. Keep a copy, keep them in a sealed bag so they don't get wet, um, and keep it in your um, emergency kit to be able to get out. Have photographs of your animals um, and update those photographs. Um, we recently realized for our dog who's a year old, we had a photograph on our emergency kit of him when he was eight weeks old. Well, he doesn't look like he did when he was eight weeks old anymore, so we had to update that picture. Um, our older dog now has a gray muzzle and doesn't look the same as she did when she was five, so we had to update her picture as well. Uh, make sure everything is current. Um, family contact information, um, whether it's uh, friends, you know, a parent, somebody close by who we can contact um, to get the animal to or who's able to get in contact with you if we weren't able to, um, it's very helpful. Um, Dog licenses, collars that you can have on. Leather works really well because it's not going to burn up in a fire or if it gets too hot, it's not going to melt onto them. So having a nylon collar uh, makes it easier for us to be able to clip the leash to it if uh, we need to to get them out. Um, trash bags, it's always good to have trash bags. You can use them for a million different things. Um, if it wasn't a fire, if it were, say, uh, a flu and there was lots of rain and they're in a kennel um, and you're stuck somewhere and you can't get out, you can at least put a trash bag over the top of the kennel. It's a great way to kind of make a little tent for them so that they're not getting wet. Um, you can utilize it for a million different things. Um, carriers and crates, make sure you have a, a dog crate uh, for either your dogs, cats, or whatever animals. Uh, people use it for chickens. Um, large dog crates could be used for goats and pigs and 
it's just a great way to keep them safe and in the spot where if you had to put them in your car, you don't want to be driving in a hectic situation and have three dogs running around the back of your car. If you're able to get them in a contained spot, that would be much better. Um, for cats, you want to make sure you have cat litter, um, an ability to put them somewhere. So a cat box or a, even a cardboard box that you can cut down for them to use so that they're comfortable. Uh, cleaning wipes, you may or may not have access to water. So make sure you have some kind of way to keep things clean and sanitary. Um, and then when it comes to livestock. Um, we'll go into this here, might be the next slide. Um, you want to make sure that you have the same kind of stuff set up for them, but for the livestock. So hay, make sure you have plenty of hay for a couple of days of food. Um, I would recommend getting the hay and putting it into something like a, a tub if you can, or a Tupperware container that's large. You can close off that way if a spark comes and it doesn't set it on fire. Um, a lot of people like to put hay down inside the trailers for their animals to make things a little bit softer. That's a terrible idea if it's during a fire because all it takes is a little spark to hit that and then your entire trailer is going to go up into flames. Um, which is obviously not what you want to have done. Um, make sure your, your trailer is working. Um, it doesn't do you any good if you have flat tires, if you have no idea how to hook it up, um, or if it's not operating properly. Again, make sure your, your horses and your animals know how to load. The more you do it in a controlled environment, the easier it's going to be when it comes to a disaster or a high stress situation to get the animals in there. Okay, where to go? So this is some examples of places uh, that we have set up. So uh, we use um, wherever the county sets that we're going to have to go to set up for a shelter is where we're going to typically have our animal shelter as well. So in the floods back in 2017, we utilized a lot of schools. Um, we used McQueen High School for one of our shelters. Uh, the people were kept in one area and we usually set up the animals uh, fairly close to them. Um, we can set up outdoor shelters, indoor shelters. Uh, if it's being held at a uh, either the livestock event center or one of the photos above is at Ironwood Stables, you can see it's inside of their barn. Uh, we have crates set up where the animals can go into. The picture on the top left there is a photograph, I believe that was at McQueen High School, um, with a bunch of crates set up ready for people to come in. And generally they're temporary. Um, the animals may just have to go in there for a couple hours until people can um, come back and locate their animals and get them out of there. Um, Gymnasiums are typically used for people and the auditoriums will be used for the animals. Auditoriums aren't quite as echoey and we're able to put the animals in there and have less of the noise traveling everywhere to disturb people. Um, what we'll do is, there was a photograph above, let me go back to it, is if we get an animal, let's say we have to go into your residence, you call us because you had to leave or you weren't at home and you called up and we went and got your dog or cat out of there. Um, There's gonna be a kennel card. So you can see this photograph of the dog in the crate here. And it's going to have all the information pertinent to get this animal back to you. It's going to have where they came from, when they came in. Um, we're able to find the address where they came from, um, phone numbers, any kind of information that we have done to contact an owner or that we can use to get to an owner. Um, that will be kept with all of your animals uh, so that we don't lose track of anything because the last thing we want to do is lose track of an animal. Um, Training-wise, um, Animal Services does a lot of training. Um, we have uh, evacuation trailers. We have two evacuation trailers that we can take and set up anywhere in the county. Um, I believe we're able to house up to 150 animals out of one of those trailers. Uh, we have enough kennels and crates. We have pop-up tents that we can cover completely to get out of the elements. Um, heaters, uh, electricity, and generators inside there. Um, we have two stock trailers that we're able to use to get animals out on every fire. We usually have a team. Uh, two separate teams uh, with a chase truck and another person towing the trailer so that we can have a minimum of two people um, helping to get animals off property. Um, we also have a lot of uh, um, training materials uh, to be able to work with animals that may not have been from a disaster but could have fallen and gotten hurt. Um, we have uh, slings, we have a 700 pound dummy horse that we use on a regular basis. Uh, we place it into some difficult situations and then our team works together to secure it and get them out of there. Um, you can see photographs here of um, our dummy horse that is being pulled up on a slide um, to get to safety. So we have a lot of uh, tools at our dispense to be able to help out in situations, especially in fires. Um, we are happy to get in there and get them out. Um, you can see the picture here on the right um, is one of our trailers that has all the um, kennels inside of it. Uh, we could do get about 150 animals out of each of those trailers. We have two of them depending on what's going on. We usually uh, separate them across the county in case something happens we're able to uh, utilize one over the other. Um, all right and here's the slide here with our address on it. 
um, and our phone number. So we're located at 2825 Longley Lane. Our phone number is 322-DOGS, 322-3647. Um, if you have any questions, you can always give us a phone call. If you want to get your animals microchipped, you give us a call. If you're a resident, it does not cost you anything, a resident of Washoe County. Um, we can microchip anything and everything. Make sure those microchips are up to date. Uh, make sure that you are, if you change your phone number, if you get a new phone number, if you have additional parties, if you want to put your spouse or family members on there who are authorized to get your animals as updated. If you move, make sure you update that. Um, if you call us, we will update it in our own system. You also want to contact your microchip company. If you don't know who the microchip company is, you can ask us over the phone and we can give you all that information so you can call and update with them as well. Okay, and that is the presentation. Great, thanks Robert. Um, You're let's see, let's stop sharing your screen and then stop share. let me get to questions. Um, there's things that I didn't even realize like that. You talked about how there are, um, nylon leashes or halters that can melt. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. Um, so what, what else can people use if, if, you recommend them not using nylon leashes or halters? Yeah, uh, leather works great. Um, so I have uh, leather collars for my dogs just because it's easier. They cost a little bit more, but they're stronger and they're not going to be any issue there. Um, I also carry a slip lead. Um, having dogs and doing what I do for a living, you know, it's probably not common for the average person to carry around. But I carry a leather slip lead, um, which slips over the dog's head. You don't need a collar for it, period. Um, and it essentially is like a... a I don't want to say noose in a bad way, but it's like a noose that goes over the head and it tightens that way. Uh, it cannot slip off of them. Um, collars can also back off. So dog dogs get scared. They'll kind of pull back away and they can pull the collar right off the head. So slip lead is going to be a much better option because it, it won't come off. Okay. Um, let's see. What other questions are there? Um, so I have a question. Um, so Considering that, you know, we're, we're in the middle of um, a pandemic with COVID, is there anything to consider when, there, when residents are at evacuation centers? Um, well, they're going to keep everybody separated. Um, things are a little bit different now uh, with COVID. Um, you used to have everything kind of housed together. We're not doing that now um, just because of the safety side of it. So um, if they set the... Um, senior center for the evacuation site, which is typically what they do. Uh, animals will go there too. What we're going to do is take the animals from there and bring them directly to our shelter. Um, that way things are separated and there's less contact. I don't know that they're housing people there right now. It's kind of more of a hub for people to show up to. And then from there they get sent away to um, a hotel or wherever the county's going to put them. Um, and you may take your animal there with you as well. Um, I believe everywhere they're setting up is animal friendly as well, just to make sure nobody's being separated from the pets. We don't want your animal to be in danger. And we also don't want your animal to be the reason why you don't evacuate or the reason why uh, you feel like you can't uh, get assistance. Okay. And then um, just be, just to, to keep us, uh, you know, relevant to all of our audience, you know, so we have some people who, who aren't in Washoe County. We have some people who aren't even in the state um, where, where, can people go to, look to, for, for these questions if they don't live in Washoe County? Just um, their, well, their... Us, Sorry? Yeah, we advise, uh, we advise, obviously, just give us a call, and we can point you in the right direction. Um, we have no problem if you call up and say, hey, I live in Plumas County, and I don't know what to do in case of a fire. We can get you the correct numbers and point you in the right direction. Um, you could also just call your local uh, sheriff's department. They should be able to tell you right where to go. Um, that would probably be the quickest route just because that's their county and they're going to know what to do, but we'll certainly help you out best we can as well. Great. Um, okay. So I, I got a question from Kathleen. Oh, and she asked, will we be able to replay this webinar? I've gotten so many of these questions. Um, so yes, we are recording this webinar and um, we just have to make this ADA accessible. We have to have subtitles on these videos. They will be up on our U YouTube um, University of Nevada Reno Extensions YouTube site. Um, and so if you can just check back within a few weeks, we will have this up. They will be, um, they will have subtitles, but it's going to take us a few weeks to get it recorded and, and then with subtitles. Um, second question, I have a cat that was chipped in Arizona and I can't get the information from the county about the chip. How do I find out if the chip, found out the chip company 
and how to update the information on the chip. Um, if you can bring your cat to the shelter in a carrier, we'll scan it there for you and we can look all that up for you. Um, based on the chip number, there's a website um, called petmicrochiplookup.org. Um, and all you have to do is type in the microchip number. So even if you have that number, um, you can just go to that website. That's petmicrochiplookup.org. Um, and it'll tell you exactly the company who microchipped that animal and gives you a phone number to contact it. Or just bring them up to us. We'll update them in our system. It doesn't cost you anything. It just takes a couple of minutes and we can help you with that as well. Okay. I had no idea. Um, okay. Cheyenne actually uh, responded. Hi, Cheyenne. She said, great info, Robert. What suggestions can you provide to those pet owners that may not be at home when the emergency strike? How can we prepare in advance? Great question. So there's two places to call. Um, call us directly. So if it's if you have animals, don't give us a call, 322-3647, and we'll send some to the property there. Um, and depending on where you're at, where the disaster is at, you know, we'll dictate um, what actions happen. Sometimes we don't have to do anything. Sometimes we will go out and take your animals right away. Um, you can also always call the sheriff's department. Um, they're a hub there, and they're going to be able to, they'll contact us directly um, as well. Yeah, that she actually brings up a great point. So um, I, I apologize if I missed this in your presentation, but um, I remember uh, us talking about having, you know, a little sign on your window that says how many pets are in your home. Um, do, yeah, what that, happens when people do that? So that, that's a really good point. Um, so you can go to a hardware store, your local hardware store. I'm sure you can get them online too. And there are little stickers that go on your front door that say, I have three cats and four dogs have that on there because that tells us what we need to look for. Um, we may go to your house and people are in an absolute frantic mess sometimes when this happens and they forget the number of animals they have. Um, we've gone to homes to go get, they called us up, said, hey, we got out with our dogs and cats. This just happened on the Loyalton fire. Um, but we have uh, two pigs at our property. So we went back for the pigs and we heard a dog barking inside the house. They totally spaced that they were watching somebody's dog. So we went in and were able to get the dog out because we heard it. Um, so if you're able to put on there that I have two dogs and four cats, we can go in. Generally, the dogs are going to be easy to find. Cats hide. Um, so if we don't see them, we're not going to tear your house apart necessarily. But if we know they're in the house, we can look a lot harder and really try to locate where those animals are at. Also, make sure that's current. You know, a lot of times we'll get the sticker, we'll put it up there. And we never think twice about it. But we get another dog or we lose a cat or something like that. Um, so make sure it's a current number on there. Um, but that is super helpful. I believe most of them have dates too as to one put that up there so if we look at it and it says that you had four dogs but it was posted in 1988 that's probably not going to be super accurate but if it's from this year you know that'll make things a lot easier for us to feel comfortable that we got all your animals out safely great yeah i've always wondered that i do have a sticker on my window that says how many animals i have and i, I wondered well who, who does that so it's, it's great to know that the animal yeah. services does help with that um, we got a question, uh, Karen would like to know, can we get the slides as well? So she would like a copy of your slides. Would that be okay? Um, yeah, we can send that out. Okay. Um, maybe I could, I could probably just send you a copy and if that's something you guys want to distribute. Definitely. So if anybody's attending this workshop and they would like a copy of these slides, why don't you email us at lwf at unr.edu and we'll email you the slides. Um, Let's see, I, I had somebody email me. Um, they wanted to know what to do about an uncooperative pig. That happens on every fire. It is like clockwork that we get a property with a large pig. Um, it takes a lot of manpower. Um, so they have something, uh, it, it's like a, a slide that you can use in, it's usually like a three foot by four foot piece of plywood and we'll have a handful of them. And you use those to make like a chute. So you can try to get a chute set up to, get them up onto a trailer. Um, people probably never think about it, but this is when it is so important that you practice and that you try to load your animals, even a pig, because if a pig doesn't want to go and he's scared, he's not going to go, especially when you have a 400 pound pig. Um, it's just simply not going to happen. Um, so we have to get pretty creative, uh, but making a shoot for him is uh, a good way to do it. Um, and we do carry those on our trailers. Great. I, I didn't even consider pigs. Um, so let's see, uh, Karen had another question. She said, where can we get those stickers from? Um, and I believe you said a, a hardware store. Any, any hardware store works, correct? I've seen them, yeah, you go, uh, any hardware store, we have the areas where they have like the, the garage sale signs and the for sale signs. You always see those kind of stickers there. Um, I'm sure 
if you go online, you know, at any of the major uh, retailers there online uh, would be able to sell those as well. Um, they, they're super handy um, and they're only a couple of dollars to put on there. Great. Um, I think that is the end of our questions. Um, if we missed your question, you can always visit or always email us at lwf at unr.edu. If you'd like a copy of the slides, you can email us at lwf at unr.edu. Um, you know, I would love to, to thank Robert.